Here are the plans for the slew pivot that we're going to be making. It involves all of these pieces. It looks like uh, 20 or so pieces that we're going to cut out and drill and weld together. Now, when you're looking at plans or blueprints for projects like this, it can be very confusing. Uh, there's a whole bunch of numbers, a whole bunch of uh, letters, and things that aren't really well described. Well, quickly, I'll explain how to look at this uh, diagram. So we have uh, one of the main diagrams right over here. As you can see, each uh, piece has a number corresponding to it, and that tells you what kind of material you're going to be using. So the first thing I'm going to be cutting out is this piece right here, and that is piece number eight. In the lower right-hand corner, there's a little uh, key right here. It tells us piece number eight is a piece of 4x4 four four square tubing that's an eighth inch thick. And I have that right over here. Now how do we know how long to cut it? Well, we have to look at the rest of this diagram. As you can see, there are several measurements for different pieces, and we have to look until we find the one that we're looking for, and in this case, it is right here. These two lines right here indicate the length minus these little end plates, uh, and it says it's a nine and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna measure it out, and I'm gonna scribe a mark, and then I'm gonna cut it nine and a quarter inches. So I've just cut out three pieces. I've cut out this top piece, that bottom piece, and that middle piece. Here they are. There's that middle piece. Here are the top and bottom pieces. Now I have to drill a hole. I have to drill several holes. But I just want to uh, demonstrate how to get this hole designed. So we're looking at this. You can see there's a hole for a bushing right there. We're going to go to one of the details. Here's an above view of the piece we're looking at. This letter B is going to be the first hole I drill. So there's a little hole guide in the bottom left hand corner right here. Let me get that in focus for you. So B, we're going to be drilling a one and a half inch hole right there. Now to get the measurements, you'll see right here, this little number above my finger, that's one and a quarter inch. And that two X means there's going to be two holes, one for the bottom and one for the top piece. So we're going to get the center of that hole one and a quarter inch from the edge, and then we're going to do it again right here. See this little dash mark? Uh, I'm sorry, this little dash mark and that little dash mark means two. Two inches, and that's two times because there's a top and bottom place. So we're going to get this hole two inches from the side that way, and then one and a quarter inch from that side. I'm going to measure it out, use a center punch, and then drill the hole. Check it out. So that is where I'm going to drill my hole. Now instead of doing this measurement on both pieces, what I'm going to do is I'm going to center punch this, drill my pilot hole for my hole saw, and then I'm going to use this as a template, line up the hole saw again, and drill through this piece. That way I know they're 100% the same. So here's that piece that we just drilled a hole into. As you can see, 
it came out exactly where it should. Uh, now there's another hole that I measured out and I have to drill right there and quickly to go over it we've got uh, so this second hole right there is a hole A which by looking at the key down here means we need a one inch hole and it's uh, five and a quarter inches from the edge and then two inches from that edge so right there now that you know how to determine how to drill the holes I'm just gonna cruise right along and get building So here's a closer look of what I just welded. This is the bottom uh, mount for the hydraulic cylinder that's going to control the slew rotation of the backhoe. Uh, the hydraulic cylinder is going to go into here. This hole uh, is going to receive a one inch pin and the hydraulic cylinder is going to mount in here. These are the supports that support it. These sections are cut out so the cylinder rod as this pivots around there'll be a clearance for it. So I tacked it in and I just tested it for fit uh, and everything will work great. So now now I'm going to weld these two pieces into its final position and then finish uh, adding the brackets around it. So once again here are the plans for the slew and then this is what the slew looks like in real life. So this is almost 100% built uh, with the exception of these mounting points right here. I still need to make those. I'm going to wait until I construct the boom arm for the backhoe and then I can uh, fit it all together. But I've uh, tacked these mounts in place and everything else is uh, mounted in their final position. So this is what it looks like, 90% complete. This is called the slew pivot, or the pivot slew. And uh, it's going to mount to the back of the tractor like this. There's going to be a big one inch pin that goes through here. And then this is where the boom is going to attach into this area right here. And then the hydraulic cylinder that controls the pivoting is going to mount underneath here. So there it is, as you can see. These two are uh, grease fittings. These two holes right here are grease fittings for that primary one inch pin that's going to go completely through this. Well, almost dropped it. So one more time, looking at the comparison, so this is what it looks like in real life. This is what it looks like in blueprint form. So we transform that pile of steel that you saw earlier into this. So here's the slew mounted onto the subframe of the backhoe. Here's that one inch pin that I was talking about. There are grease fittings on top and bottom as well as down in the center that I showed you a moment ago. This uh, slew right here is going to pivot in close to a 180 degree arc. The backhoe boom is going to attach right here. The cylinder that's going to mount to the boom is going to attach on the front right here. The cylinder that controls the pivoting action of this slew is going to mount down here and come over and mount to right about here on the backhoe. So as this 
slew pivot cylinder opens and closes, it's going to be pulling this and pushing it into close to a 100 degree, 180 degree arc, excuse me. It's going to go just like that. Well, that's all we have time for today. Please stay tuned for more videos of this Cub Cadet 149 tractor loader backhoe transformation. Also, if you need new high quality aftermarket parts for your vintage small engine, please check out my website, isavetractors.com. My name is Norman. Thanks for watching.